that's done there. Uh, second project is to do some weathering on this N-scale box car. This uh, is also an exact rail car. I use mostly these um, pan pastels, which have become more popular lately. Uh, like regular weathering powders, I have a lot of these AIM ones that uh, also work pretty well. And I use these artist oils for doing, doing more rust work. Uh, a burnt, a burnt sienna and a burnt, a burnt umber. I th those tend to work fairly well. And then what I'll typically do is sprinkle on some of the uh, uh, powdered stuff on top of the oils once they, they have been applied. And that helps to create a little bit more texture and makes it makes it look rustier uh, in general. And these these are primarily for you know like the roofs and and some of the uh, the harder worn areas that you see along the, the, the where, where the uh, doors slide and so forth. But one of the things that I like to do first is just to um, go ahead and and try to fade the car in general. That's sort of one of the base things that most people try to do first. Um, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is just to pop off the wheel sets, um, leaving the trucks on there so I don't crush any details when I put you know place this thing down. I did spray everything first with a coat of uh, just matte acrylic. Um, spray kind of like dull coat. Uh, the main reason for that is that if you just try to apply the chalks or the pastels directly to the raw plastic they have a tendency to not stick as well and so by spraying it with the uh, the matte finish first that tends to uh, allow there to be a little bit more tooth you know for the chalks and pastels to kind of grip onto and so um, anyway that's uh, step number one um, I'm going to play around a little bit here and see what I want to do to fade this. Uh, typically, like with these yellowish type box cars, I will tend to use sort of a whitish um, or grayish chalk and then just lightly, you know, kind of scrub that in there and that just tends to fade the paint color. And I could try, I'll try doing that here too and see what happens. Um, a lot of times a good way to do things is to find the color that is sort of like a, a step below what the actual color of the box car is. And so if you can find, you know, like if it's a red car and you can find another red chalk or pastel that's a little bit lighter in color, um, that can be a good way to, it's definitely very orange. Um, this dark rust color might actually work better, we'll see. So anyway, I will just put one of my many brushes over here and just kind of play around and see what works for for uh, you know fading things. Um, so we'll try this rust color first and see what that does. And that actually does a pretty good job. You can see this right off the bat, just using the rust colored chalk. Um, you, know, you get sort of a faded appearance of the color going from um, you know, the factory color to what looks to be a much more dulled down color, which is really what you want to, the main thing you want to get after. If, if you can do nothing else, just get everything faded down so it looks more sun beaten and more you know, realistic and it's not you know, shiny, bright, new since that is rarely what you ever see on the, you know, on an actual train. So I'll go ahead and try this white just to see how that works out since that is often something I'll try to do. The white does provide a little bit of fading as well, but I like the, this rust color chalk better with the red just because um, with the white you have to make sure you get all the extra chalk off, otherwise it, uh, you know, you, you can see the white part and so it doesn't look realistic, but, but with the rust colored, with, with the, on top of the red paint that, uh, you know, if you have some left on there, it doesn't really, it's not really noticeable as much. Okay, so just after a few minutes with the first coat of chalk, you can see this car already looks, you know, a good deal more realistic. We're no longer with the shiny red paint. Um, 
one thing that I like to do is try to you know, find the points that would typically have a lot of wear on them. And so I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, burnt umber and I'm going to basically dab that along the rails here where the track at the door would slide on. And I'm going to go back and rub a lot of this off. But then you can go ahead and try to simulate where there might be scratches from the door sliding. Take this screwdriver, get a little bit on there. Just kind of scratch that along there. Random bits of, of uh, rust on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the dark earth. I'm just going to go ahead and dab that on there. Um, Idea to be, so that'll kind of stick to the oils. I'm going to try to drag this down. Since rain is going to be washing this stuff off. I'll go ahead and do the same on this side here. Random. I'm not, you know, the best weathering person by any means at all. Um, but I do try to at least get things. dulled out and looking dirty and worn at least a little bit. Now with the roof rust, I'm going to go ahead and do this, uh, do the burnt sienna in some spots. A lot of times you'll see that the rust is rust areas are darker in the middle and lighter on the edges. So I'm going to try to replicate that a little bit. Of course, again, I'm going to come back with powders on top of here. A little bit. Of, try to pull that down a little bit on the sides. more of this dark rust and just kind of go over everything with that to sort of blend in things and fade things together a little bit. So there you can see the finished result. It's not, you know, it's not fantastic, but it does at least, um, you know, it's not new looking, which is sort of the main goal. It's dirtied up and rusted up a little bit. And, uh, you know, it only took a few minutes to do. And so the last thing I'm going to do with this one, like the other one, is also to overweight it. Again, these exact, exact rail cars, you can just peel off the roof here. Just 
one's definitely glued down better than the other one was. Okay, and then I just have these weights individually picked off. I'll try to add one more, at least another ounce. So I got four of the weights in there, which have up to one more ounce. There we go. Um, again, I'm gonna go ahead and, and spray this with some dull coat once everything is uh, dry, probably in a couple days, and uh, put the wheels back on and we'll be good to go. Um, I don't usually bother with weathering the underside too much since you don't normally see that. Um, both obviously you can certainly do that, um, but with a lot of these the details are so delicate that I don't like to um, sometimes even bother messing with them. So if they're not readily visible, I just pretty much leave it alone. And um, so there we go. There is one out of, one box car out of many to do and um, at least it does look more realistic having the basic weathering done that I did on here. So anyway, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Bye.